and welcome back to another Captain's Academy episode and today I'm going to be talking about how to carry her and this one, this video has taken me a while because this is not an easy video to make because there's just so many different things. So there's three stages of getting good at CV play. And the stage one, the very very first one, is mastering manual drops and strafes. The second stage is then improving on your map awareness and knowing where things are on the map and where you need to be. And the final stage is actually your own positioning, because believe it or not, where you position your own carrier actually does become very, very important. But let's start with stage one. So the very first thing you have to do is really master how to drop uh, with torpedo bombers, dive bombers, and how to use strafe. So with torpedo bombers, you need to learn how to stack and drop, but you also need to learn how to cross drop. With dive bombers, you need to learn how to stack and drop, and you also need to learn how to uh, drop one at a time and potentially do damage over time. With your fighters, you need to learn how to strafe effectively, but you also need to learn when you should strafe versus when you should just click. Now, for the basics on how to do all these things, you should probably check out Captain's Academy episode number 21 and 23 as they cover uh, all of these particular mechanics. But what I'll do in this video is probably just go over them quickly. The basics behind manual torpedo drop are as follows. First, you select your squadron, either pressing the number on your keyboard or you can drag by holding down your left mouse button. You can drag a box on your screen to select the planes. Then when you are wanting to drop, you hold down the Alt key, you bring up the reticule, which you will see is a bunch of dotted white lines along with like a green rectangular bar. And what you do is when you've decided where you want the torpedoes to drop, which is at the base of that rectangle, uh, you click with your left mouse button. Now your planes will fly in, cross the dotted white line, and when they cross, they commit, and the bar turns from green to yellow. And then when your plane gets to the base of that box, the torpedoes drop. The torpedoes do have a little bit of an arm time, actually quite a bit. And they will at first only be a white line on your screen. And when they have armed, they will have that green triangle, which leads a lot of battleship players to say that, hey, look, the torpedoes got dropped 0.1 off my hull. It's because they've armed 0.1 from your hull and you've seen the green triangles. They've actually dropped a little bit further back. To show the arming distance in action, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one torpedo bomber drop quite literally very, very close to the battleship, like 0.1 kilometers away. And what you'll see is that the torpedoes will drop. You'll see the white lines, but there's no triangle, so the torpedoes don't arm. And battleship takes absolutely no damage from me. So as a CV player, you have to factor in uh, how much of that space you want to give because you also have to consider that the enemy ship is going to be maneuvering. If they turn in to shorten that distance, you might want to leave yourself an extra little bit of room. So in this case, I dropped a little bit further back. The torpedoes are coming in. They arm right there when the green triangles pop up. And from the time they arm to the time they hit the battleship, there isn't all that much room for the battleship to maneuver. The next step, of course, is then to learn how to stack your planes. And there's two ways to group up planes. One of them is to drag a box like this. And the other way is to hold down the shift key and press the... Uh, designated numbers for your torpedo bombers. So in this case, uh, it's three and four for me, so I press shift three, four, and they will group together. Then what you do is you sort of fly them closer and closer together, and finally, when they stack like this, and you hold down the alt key, you can have both torpedo bombers drop, basically torpedoes, right on top of one another. And so by doing that, uh, it looks like I've dropped four, but it's really eight torpedoes, and when I hit, it's all double hits, doing quite a tremendous amount of damage. Now, as a CV, you also have to know how to do good cross drops because it's going to allow you to deal with things like destroyers. Now, there's two kinds of destroyer players. One of them is the sort of reactive destroyer player where they react after your planes have dropped and they can see where the torpedoes are. And the other one is the anticipatory ones. And the reactive ones are really easy to drop on, while the ones that anticipate your actions, those are really hard to drop on. So I'm going to first deal with the ones who are reactive. Now, reactive is very, very simple. So let's say you have a destroyer like this, and see where the plane is with the green arrows. What you do is you can just approach them either dead straight on or directly from behind, and you drop torpedoes. Now, these torpedoes are not expected to hit. What they're supposed to do is they're supposed to lock the destroyer into place so the destroyer can only sail forward or stop in an effort to get out of that locked down position. And while they're doing either one of those two things, sailing straight forward, maybe at increased speed, or slowing down, you come in with the squadron represented with the pink arrow from the side, and you drop right on the side, and you're hopefully gonna be able to accomplish a rather simple cross drop and get some torpedo hits. 
However, against good destroyer players that anticipate your actions, this method of dropping isn't going to work. In those kinds of situations, you need to force the destroyer player to do things that you want them to do, rather than allowing them to dictate the course of the action. So, dealing with the ones that are more anticipatory, the ones that are, before your planes even drop the torpedoes, already turning into the planes, in this kind of scenario, what you need to do is you need to force the destroyer into the lock. So what that means is approaching from an angle and then dropping torpedoes at an angle. Now, what destroyers are being forced to do in this kind of scenario, especially as they're turning into your planes, is if you drop like this, the destroyer has to turn into your torpedoes in order to get through the gap. And while they turn into that gap, they can't turn away or turn in another direction. And right as they turn into that gap, you bring in another aircraft from the side and you bomb them from the side. And again, creating a cross drop, but this time, what you're doing is you're forcing that player into that lock position with the way you're dropping, and then you bring in the drop from the side. When compared to the first cross drop method, you're already dropping just to lock it down right away. Here you're having to go, okay, if I drop here, are you going to make that turn? Are you going to get into this slot? Okay, you are, great, then you come in from the side. And so this method is a lot more effective against players that are already maneuvering against your planes. So here I'm using that second method in action. What I do is I bring in the number four squadron. You see that I drop off at an angle. What I'm doing is by dropping an angle, I'm forcing the destroyer to turn into my torpedoes. And as he's doing that, in order to avoid being hit, I drop from the side and the destroyer, even though he's trying hard to get away, is going to eat one of my torpedoes, taking quite a lot of damage. Manual dive bombing is very similar mechanics-wise to manual torpedo bombing, except you're approaching directly from the front or back of the ship. You'll notice that when you hold down the Alt key for manual dive bombing, you'll see that the reticle for the drop is a lot smaller. Again, very similar. When you decide, you click. Once your planes pass the dotted line, they'll the, the circle will turn from green to yellow, meaning they've locked down. The planes will drop the bombs inside the you know the area of that circle, and hopefully you get a couple of good hits and maybe even a fire or two. Fighter strafing uses the same sort of manual mechanics as manual torpedo bombing, manual dive bombing. You hold down the Alt key, you get a big reticule with a green box that is the strafe box. And you want to do is you want to catch enemy planes inside that strafe box, ideally from behind, so you can kill a lot of them in one pass. So here's a dive bomber. I'm going to try to get up, get up sort of behind the dive bomber, hold down the Alt key, get the strafe box, left click, box turns from green to yellow, meaning the planes are locked down, the strafe occurs and the planes melt in no time at all. Now, if you're up against bombers, I generally prefer strafing, that's just me, because typically when it comes to bomber strafing, I do get into pretty good positions and get the strafes off. However, strafing fighters, enemy fighters, there are sort of occasions when you want to strafe and occasions when you just want to click. So strafe, if let's say their fighters are being inattentive, the fighters are locked down by your fighter, let's say they are three on one, they're ganging up on you, you can strafe that. Uh, strafe if, let's say, uh, you get up behind them and they don't know you're there, and so that's an easy way to wipe out a squadron of fighters. However, if the enemy CV is very much aware, what you want to do is not really strafe. You want to lock them down by clicking, but in advantageous positions. Now, you can still strafe, and you can still occasionally do well with it, but the ammo consumption is so high is that if the enemy CV locks you down right away, you do tend to lose uh, that fight. So what you want to do is get into positions where you have the A advantage. So let's say there's a battleship yours nearby, let's say in North Carolina. Well, great. Fight within that A range of the North Carolina. You are guaranteed that win because the North Carolina's A is going to pick off a lot of those fighters for you. So that's sort of the decision when to strafe versus when to just click and fight. Stage two of getting good with CVs is map awareness and knowing what to do and when to do it. And this is the stage that probably most CV players will struggle the most with because there's so many things that you have to think about and so many things that you have to do that sometimes it's not easy to keep track of all of them. And of course, by not being able to keep track of all of them, it's also what opens up a lot of holes for you to potentially take advantage of. So things like, you know, are there enemy ships that I need to go spot for my team? Is there a destroyer that's hiding somewhere that I need to find? Are there ships that my team is engaged with right now that if I bomb something, I can turn that fight in my team's favor? Or is there something that I have to bomb over preferences of bombing something else because that ship has a greater value for the enemy team? Are there isolated ships that I can pick off and is it worth picking off that ship, or is there something else that I can be doing that's more important, like maybe bombing a destroyer versus a battleship? 
are there bombers that I need to intercept versus should I be escorting my own bombers because the target I'm going to be bombing has a higher value than let's say the target that the enemy CV is bombing. These are all things you have to consider, right? Is there a cap I need to reset? Is there something that only I can do at the right times, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason I say et cetera is because there's so many other things that you have to be aware of. It's like, where is the concentration of enemy AA? Where is their fighter coverage? Are there gaps? What is the uh, positioning of the enemy ships versus their CV, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's all these questions you have to know to build up that map awareness. And this map awareness really just comes from experience. The more you play and the more you think about it, the generally speaking, the better it gets over time. There's no way I'm gonna be able to fit an entire map awareness lesson for CVs into one video because that video most likely would end up being like five hours long and uh, most of you probably be asleep by the time I finish. <laughs> and the third and final stage is positioning. And as good CV players, they will utilize their stealth or whatnot and islands and terrain, so on and so forth, to put themselves in the most advantageous position, meaning closer to the front lines than other CVs might be willing to go. Because the closer you are, the less time it takes your planes to fly back, and then the less time it takes your planes to get back into action. This difference in time will allow more experienced players to have an advantage over CVs that just sit way in the back. But of course, by moving up and being closer to front lines, you do put yourself at a greater risk for getting shot at. So, you know, this stage is not easy to do, especially when you're focusing on your planes. However, one other thing to sort of note about this is that good position can sometimes decide battles, right? If you're in the right place at the end of the game or there's very, very few ships, maybe your ability to get a cap or to contest a cap might be the difference between winning and losing. All right. Enough theories, because theories can only go you so far. Let's take a look at an actual battle, and during the battle, I'll do my best to explain uh, my train of thought of what's going on to the best of my ability, and hopefully you'll get an inside look at what goes on in uh, the mind of a CV player. All right, so this is going to be a rank battle. Now, I apologize as this was recorded off a replay, so there's a few things that are not very good. Uh, I don't actually generally don't like CB replays because they're just kind of weird. Uh, one thing is you'll notice that as I switch uh, views on my screen, so like moving to different parts of the map, it feels like the stuff is sometimes a little bit behind where I'm going, so you'll see sort of that weird little bit of lag. I do apologize for that. And also the other thing you won't be able to see is you won't be able to see my individual squadron selection. So unfortunately I've had to select all of them in order to just show you everything that the planes are doing. So at the beginning of the battle, now in ranked it's a little bit different because vision is much more important in ranked than let's say in random. So what I do at the beginning is I dump the bombs on my dive bombers, both of them. And you know, yes I don't have the striking capability with my dive bombers anymore, but these dive bombers are gonna fly faster, faster than even the fighters that they're gonna come uh, up against. This allows you to scout, and as long as you maintain a good awareness of where these dive bombers are, you should be able to maintain vision for quite a while. So I send them into the cap area trying to scout for enemy destroyers because, you know, especially in rank, destroyers play a huge role. Their ability to get onto cap, contest caps, and so on and so forth. So I'm looking for them. I'll notice that this particular dive bomber squadron has run into some fighters, so I immediately pull away. And by pulling away, you'll notice how much faster my dive bombers are compared to the fighters. And of course, the enemy fighter doesn't really want to chase. So again, like I mentioned, that map awareness is going to be a big thing, right? So one of the things that you'll notice is that as you get better and better and better as a CV player, you're going to be fighting quite a lot of your battles from the mini map rather than just looking at your screen. Like, yes, you'll still look at your screen, but you know that's only for doing strikes or things like that. Generally speaking, a lot of times you're going to be staring at the minimap, trying to fly your planes around, and you're able to keep a pretty good sense of where enemy planes are. So, right now, uh, early stages of the game, you'll notice that the last thing to come out is actually my torpedo bombers, because again, ranked is a little bit different from randoms. Randoms, you know, the torpedo bombers can come out first even, and you can try to get that lucky early first kill. All right, so spotted the enemy torpedo bombers. I know they're there, but also the enemy has the same number of fighters as I do. So unfortunately, probably won't be able to protect people against those torpedo planes. The fighters, the enemy fighters, are probably going to get sacrificed to engage my fighters. Now, I'm trying to get into advantageous positions, potentially to get an engage on the torpedo bombers, but no luck. Had to go for the enemy fighters. And of course, this does open up the enemy torpedo bombers to come in and make an attack. Now the reason I decided to click and not strafe on the enemy fighters 
is because I am over a friendly cruiser, the Otago, so I do have that early advantage. But the enemy CV did manage to get their torpedo bombers through and hurt one of our cruisers. They actually also managed to kill the destroyer at the same time, so immediately we're at a disadvantage, plus they take the cap early. So I need, to, I need to find a way right now to try and get something back for my team. And in this particular case, I'm looking for gaps. Holes in the enemy defense. Now I know that the fighters are, one of them is down, one of them is still being engaged. So there's probably not going to be fighters for the next little while to contest. So I'm looking for gaps now in the enemy AA and isolated ships, which in this case happens to be this Fabuki, who's a little bit away from the battleships and the cruisers. So I want to go and try to kill this Fabuki with my torpedo bombers. Again, with destroyers, you need to go in for cross drops. You need to come in from two different directions. You cannot try to tap them with double stacked uh, torpedo bombers. It just doesn't work. So I've got my torpedo bombers. I'm going to split them up now, and I'm going to try to come at this Fabuki from two different directions. Fabuki is generally a little bit easier to torpedo than things like Benson's because they're a little bit more sluggish and they're a little bit slower. So come in with one set, thinking that if the Fabuki needs to, he's going to turn, but this Fabuki didn't, so... Instead, I just come in with the other torpedo bomber squadron from the other side, making a pretty easy kill on that Fabuki. All right, so at least in terms of ship numbers, we're now even, although the enemy team is still ahead on points because they did get the early cap. Now, my team has taken the B cap, so you'll notice that I'm turning my ship and I'm going to start heading in that direction. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be closer to their lines so that I can support them easier. Also, it's easier for me to get planes back from attacking the enemy ships in that area, etc, etc, etc. So I'm turning around heading in that direction. You also notice a little bit earlier I did have one dive bomber that was sort of hanging around their CV for a little bit. The reason I did that was I just sort of wanted to know what planes were coming from the CV, although uh, I had a misclick and I brought that squadron back and I ran into AA and died. So, you know, still, yeah, you know, as a CV player, you will occasionally still make a misplay, but... You know, that's just, that, that's just the thing. It's like you will make fewer misplays, shall we say, uh, as you get more and more experienced. So right now, what am I doing? Because my planes are all down. They're either coming back or they're rearming. What am I looking for at this particular time? Well, I'm looking at where the enemy team is. I'm looking to see where they're potentially making a push, where things might be making a threat, etc. The enemy destroyer, there's only one destroyer left, and that destroyer does have an advantage over our destroyer because that is a Benson compared to our Fabuki. So, you know, I see him on the minimap right there um, near my team. So I'm like, all right, maybe what I need to do is I'll scout out all the enemy ships coming at A, and then I'll do my best to try and uh, maybe go and I'll scout out that destroyer. See enemy torpedo bombers coming in again. This time, have a fighter in position to execute a strafe again predicting the path that the torpedo bombers are going to take in order to try to bomb out Bismarck and just sort of strafing the path in front of them. And so I do kill most of them. The enemy torpedo bombers get off two torpedoes, which isn't that much of a, you know, a threat, I guess, to our Bismarck. All right, so again, having those empty dive bombers because scouting and vision is a big deal. In randoms, you wouldn't be doing this because, you know, in randoms, you want to kind of focus more a little bit on damage and things like that. One of my fighter squadrons did get caught out. I clicked a little bit late, so disadvantage there. So that's not good. I know I'm not going to win that fight. So instead, I just bring in another fighter squadron. And I'll just strafe box this entire group and just take them both down. So as, you know, a bit, a bit of an even trade, shall we say. Okay, so the one thing you can keep in mind, by the way, about the empty dive bombers is that if you're playing random and your bombers are empty, you can use them to scout. That is something you can do. So if you're a strike CV, now this is in particular to US and CV players, if you're playing a strike CV, yes, you won't have fighters in most cases, but it doesn't mean you can lose the vision war. You can still use your dive bombers to provide vision. Okay, so enemy Benson found him. Gonna try to make an attack. Uh, in this case, I got off a very, very good first torpedo run. And then I just couldn't get the other squadron to cooperate. <laughs> like, it was just that every time I was ready to make the attack, I was inside the circle, so the planes kept turning out. And so just couldn't really get that strike off properly. And, of course, losing plenty of planes to the, the uh, Bismarck's AA. So that wasn't going my way. But if I couldn't pull off the strike properly, finally the strike went, but it's too late. Only one plane left. I was like, okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to keep vision on this destroyer. Because I can see on the map that there's ships on my team that are shooting this destroyer. And I did manage to get one torpedo here, which is quite good. 
So I'm going to keep vision. I'm going to try to dive bomb the destroyer. Now you have to manual dive bomb destroyers if you want consistent hits. If you try auto bombing, a lot of times uh, you might not get things as consistently. Now in this case, RNG was a little bit in favor of the destroyer. Landed one bomb hit, took off 1500 HP, but destroyer is still alive. But I keep vision over the destroyer, making it possible for my team to kill him, and then I bring the bomber back. I do have to say that while I was focused on the Benson, the enemy CV, being a pretty good CV player herself, um, actually was doing the right thing, which was coming after uh, the destroyer on my team or the isolated ship on my team. Enemy CV was doing the right things as well, because that CV knew that I was preoccupied with trying to take down their destroyer. And as you can see, by camping this destroyer with planes, our destroyer couldn't get anywhere and really got stuck behind this island, which is not a very good place to be, especially with an enemy cruiser bearing down on you. I do admit here, right around here, I make a bit of a misplay. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, like why I wanted to try to snipe that uh, particular scout fighter. I don't know, it's just did something stupid, so I lose that squadron because it gets caught up by the enemy squadron who has all the advantage of AA. So there was a big, big misplay there. And again, you know, afterwards, you can critique yourself, especially as a CV player, you should critique yourself. You need to look at, like, what happened, what you did wrong, and, you know, the mistakes you made. In this particular case, I screwed up. I did that stupid strafe, got my fighter caught. And, of course, the enemy CV had that advantage and immediately took advantage of the fact that my fighter was preoccupied, came in, bombed out destroyer, and heavily damaged him. So, yeah, oops. You know, it happens, right? You're human after all. You will make mistakes, and you have to be willing to accept that as a CV player. But I have these two squadrons of torpedo bombers, and I'm going to go and bomb the Otago. And you might be wondering, why did you bomb the Otago? There's a Bismarck right behind him. Why are you bombing the cruiser? Well... In ranked, again, this is different. In random, yeah, you can go seek damage all you want. But in ranked battles, it's the priority targets that matter. In this case, the Otago was the priority target because that cruiser was up forward, very, very close to my team. If I damage them heavily, it gives an advantage to my team's cruiser when they're engaging. So in this case, our hipper now has the advantage. I come in with the dive bombers, a slightly awkward angle at first, but using the auto bomb to have it reposition and then switch over to manual bomb at the end and get some bombs in there, but actually our cruiser killed them first, so nothing for me, unfortunately, in that attack. All right, so I'm looking at the map now. All right, our team has moved away from the B-cap, but I see that the enemy Bismarck is now moving towards the B-cap. That Bismarck is alone. But that Bismarck poses quite a threat to the team because if that Bismarck gets onto the B cap, our point production is going to stop completely and the enemy team is going to be able to further their advantage. And right at this time, our hipper just gets completely screwed because, well, you know, uh, my one fighter squadron isn't really in position yet and of course their CV was able to go in there and do quite a bit of damage. So we lose a cruiser, so now we're further in the hole and we're losing our cap. Now, North Carolina's turn to engage the Bismarck and has done some damage, but I wanted to make that fight completely turn in favor of the North Carolina. So the next two bomber squadrons I get up immediately go after the Bismarck as quickly as I can. I want to also try to preserve as much HP on our North Carolina as possible because over at A, there's still another battleship coming through and there's a full HP Kutuzov. So I have to take care of this fight and make it so that our battleship comes out pretty much unscathed. So, attack goes in. Bismarck, nothing really you can do against a stacked attack like that, especially being forced by the battleship to keep angled. So, there we go, get a kill. Looking at the map again, and I'm like, all right, we have one remaining battleship who's really, really far away, all the way north. Um, I can go support him with my one last remaining fighter, but then, if another strike comes in against our North Carolina, that might be more danger there, especially since the Bismarck is a little bit out of... Yeah, he's just a little bit too far away to really help. So, instead of sending a fighter squadron and maybe try to do something, maybe help the Bismarck, I just kept my fighter near the North Carolina, and I'm going to make sure that the North Carolina doesn't get attacked. We need our battleships now quite desperately. Also, I'm looking at the map, and I'm thinking, okay, we have a North Carolina and an Otago, who are both lower HP than the enemy Bismarck and Kutasov, which means that, you know, in order to even out the difference, it's pretty much going to be me. And also, in the event that the trade does become equal, I need to be in better position because I'm a little bit too far away right now. So you'll see that I'll make a shift into a, a position that's closer to the enemy cap because, hey, if it's a one-to-one -one trade between the Bismarck and the Kutasov for our Otago in North Carolina, 
there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to have to eventually contest cap. And I need to be in position for that. So even as a carrier, you have to constantly be thinking about those kinds of things as well. Like, where should I be? How is this battle going to unfold? And what do I need to do if the battle unfolds one way or another? Okay. So bringing the bombers in, I have the one fighter. I'm going to make sure that, because there's the enemy torpedo bombers. So my priority is, okay, I'm going to deal with those torpedo bombers first. Make sure that that torpedo bomber cannot come in and bomb and kill our Otago or damage on North Carolina more. So before I get my strike off, I'm going to make sure that the enemy cannot come in and attack. So you'll see that I'm just sort of focusing a little bit on my fighters. I'm still moving my torpedo bombers, still moving closer to where the enemy team uh, is right now. But priority is to deal with these torpedo bombers. Try to execute a strafe box. Don't catch the, one of the squadrons as you know the enemy CV is aware that I was going to strafe, pulled one of the squadrons out, but I did manage to drop two of them. And so that is okay because I can just chase down the remaining squadron with my fighter. All right, now my two torpedo bomber squadrons are going to go after the enemy ships. I should go after the Bismarck, right? I mean, there is a big threatening ship that I should go after. No. In this particular case, I'm actually going to go and torpedo bomb the Kutasov. The Kutasov had a lot of HP, and with a rate of fire and the chance to set fires, that ship is a big threat. Get in there, draw four torpedoes in a very, very tight space, in smoke, because I'm watching the fire come out from the smoke, and I know the Kutasov is there, I drop that Kutasov's HP very, very low. And it's important to do that, because in this particular situation, the Bismarck is in a very awkward position, and I really need it so that the Otago or the North Carolina, if the Kutasov appears, they can just drop him with, let's say, one shot, and just make it for an easy kill there. All right, so I see our Otago is dropping torpedoes, so I'm like, okay, that looks like the Otago is going for the torpedoes into the gap to try to torpedo the Bismarck. Now, if that happens, and the Bismarck starts to flood, then obviously that's the next target I'm going to have to bomb because if the Bismarck floods and the Bismarck will repair that flooding, if I get in another torpedo run and I flood the Bismarck, I might be able to kill him with flooding. So that decision also to initially hurt that Kutasov ended up being quite a good one because the Kutasov is now very, very low from those four torpedoes and you'll see in a second. So Bismarck did take torpedo hits. I know he's flooding now and you really have to be aware of things like, you know, who's uh, flooding, who's burned their damage control, who's on fire. Like as a CV, you do have to be aware of those things as well. So look at the Kutasov's uh, HP, just 2000 HP. So that does make for a relatively easy kill for our Otago. My fighter is unfortunately down. So yeah, not much I can do for him there. He took a little bit of damage, I think, from that dive bomber squadron, but he's at least going to be able to kill the Kutasov. With my three remaining dive bombers, I go after the Bismarck. And I'm going to just try to get some flooding. There we go. Get only one torpedo off with that particular squadron, and there's my flooding. So the Bismarck is now bleeding some HP. Still worried that maybe, you know, he's got a heal kit or something. I try to get my last remaining torpedo bomber, my last one, into this fight, try to drop on this Bismarck, and hope that I can do a little bit more damage. Still flooding, so that's good. I'm keeping my eye on my damage counter. I know he's still flooding. There we go, I pick up another hit. So now that Bismarck is really, really hurting. But take a look at the cap advantage that the enemy team has. 900 points to 792. See my position? I had angled my way so that I just had to go in a straight line so I can move straight into cap. Out of planes. I'm totally out of planes now. And this is where positioning mattered, right? At the end of this battle, positioning meant everything because it allowed me to get onto their cap and start contesting it. Enemy CV, though, if you take a look at where the enemy CV is positioned, also in the right place. See, this is, you know, when you have good CVs play against each other, it really, you really get a lot of close games because, you know, you make very, very few mistakes. So enemy CV also in the right place, in the right spot even. And you'll see where that CV pops up in a second because I, I don't spot him, no planes left. So waiting for the enemy CV to pop up. And you'll see where that CV ends up being. Still has some planes, but I did have defensive fire, so that's lucky because, you know, tier 8 and above. But there we go. Wait, 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 wait for it. Wait for it. That CV. There we go. I'm spotted. Look at where that CV is positionally, right? That CV knows that I'm going to go for cap, knows my position. I know where that CV was. And now we get into a very, very delicate situation, right? I'm on their cap, I'm freezing their point gain. But if that CV rams me, I am screwed. 
So I have now got to, and even as a CV player, you still have to know exactly what you need to do in a situation like that. So I need to make sure I stay on their cap long enough to continue freezing their cap. I know I can't capture it because the secondaries are now active and we're constantly going to get reset. So what I need to do now to try to minimize the chances of getting rammed is to try to sail away. I'm going to try to sail away. And this, you'll see what I'm doing here is I'm trying to stay on this cap. I'm trying to sail away. And by sailing away, if I maintain a little bit of speed, even if the enemy CV comes barreling into my rear and rams me, I should maybe be able to mitigate some of the damage. Now, ramming, as long as it's like a full speed ram into a stationary target, you are going to get full damage. However, if the ram happens where one ship is you know, only ramming at a slow speed, you're not going to get full damage. So I give the enemy CV my stern, and I begin to accelerate, all the while keeping my eye very closely on the border of the cap circle. Because if I get off of cap, we're going to lose this battle, so I have to stay on it. Knowing that CVs are also not very maneuverable, after looking like I'm accelerating, I slow down, so I decelerated. And of course, this forces the enemy CV to overshoot, because you just cannot maneuver fast enough as a carrier. And so by being able to pull this maneuver off, not get off the cap, we have the battle won. But if you think back to this battle, like through this entire battle, think about the number of times that the things I talked about were essential, right? You had to get your drops right. That drop against the Kudasov had to have gotten it right. The drops against the Bismarck had to do those right. Drops against the Shores had to do those right, except for that one little screw up. The strafes had to be done right, you know, like the, what bombing you can do has to be done right. Your map awareness has to be great. You have to know exactly where you're needed versus where your team wants you, because those are often sometimes in conflict, because your team always wants you to cover them everywhere. But you, know, you have to know like, okay, I can cover this, I can't cover that, so I'm gonna sacrifice that in order to accomplish something else. You are playing a much more of a, of a strategic game rather than a tactical game on a local level. You have to make sure that your positioning is good. You cannot be off in some corner of the map by yourself, because if you're doing that, you're ineffective as a carrier. Your planes take too long to fly into action and to fly back. So in both cases, for both CVs, notice how close we were, generally speaking, to the action. Not the very beginning, but certainly by the end. Anyways, folks, that pretty much does it for this Captain's Academy video on how to play carriers. Now, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below, or you can actually join me on Discord. There's a link popping up on your screen now. Now, Discord is uh, like a Skype TeamSpeak sort of thing, and you can join on. There's text channels and voice channels, and you can ask me questions there if you would like. Anyways, uh, I hope this video helps you with your CV play. I hope your CV play uh, evolves to the next level now that you're keeping these things more in mind. Uh, aside from all that, folks, take care. Have a great day, and I'm looking forward to talking to all of you again soon.